Hi. We're going to talk today about businesses, different types of businesses. That's what chapter four is about, how to form a business. So let's look at our learning objectives first. Compare the advantages and disadvantages of sole proprietorship. So we're going to be looking at those three types, three basic types really. A sole proprietorship, a partnership, and a corporation. A sole proprietorship, the word sole means one. So a sole proprietorship is owned by one person. A partnership is owned by two or more partners. And then a corporation, which is a wholly separate type of business. Uh, number two, describe the differences between general and limited partners and compare the advantages and disadvantages of a partnership. Three, compare the advantages and disadvantages of corporations. And we're going to look at different types of corporations. We're going to look at C-Corps, S-Corps, and limited liability companies, LLCs. Define and give examples of three types of corporate mergers. Corporations are all the time looking to combine. How do they do that? What do we call those things? Explain the role of leveraged buyouts and taking a firm private. Number five, outline the advantages and disadvantages of franchises and discuss the opportunities for diversity in franchising and the challenges of global franchising. I have personal experience with franchising because I was for three years a franchise representative for haagen ice cream. I was opening up their stores all around the country. And number six, explain the role of cooperatives. So here we're talking about one, one of my favorite restaurants in the Antelope Valley. Jersey Mike's, great sub, really love it. Started by Peter Cancro in New Jersey. Brought, bought a small sub shop where he worked as a teen and expanded to more than 1,500 locations through franchising. There are several here in the Antelope Valley. After a rough spell in 1991, he was able to turn the business around by working with franchisees. So here we have an example of a franchise. By the way, you want a great sandwich, go to Jersey Mike's. Ask for a number 12. Three major forms. I already explained these. Sole proprietorship, owned by one person. Partnership, two or more. And corporations, a wholly different entity from the owners. So let's take a look. We're going to be looking at advantages and disadvantages for each one of the businesses. Advantages for a sole proprietorship, obviously, it's all yours, right? Your own boss. It's very easy to start. You want to start a candy store in the Antelope Valley, go down to the boulevard, get yourself a storefront, buy some cabinets, get a, a, reg, a, compu a register or a, a laptop computer. You're in business. Not a whole lot of work there. Pride of ownership. When you're talking to people and people are saying, well, what do you do for a living? I own my own business. There's something special about that. Leaving a legacy. When you decide to retire, you hand the business over to your, one of your kids or a, another family member. It keeps going. It's your legacy. Retention of company profits. Obviously, with one owner, there's only one person who gets the profits, if there are any. And no special taxes. Disadvantages of the big disadvantage of a sole proprietorship is something called unlimited liability. What unlim unlimited liability means is that if you get sued, you are solely responsible. So they can take your house, they can take your car, they can take pretty much anything you've got. Uh, number two, limited financial resources. So if your business becomes successful, how do you expand? Well, you expand either by using your own funds, which typically are limited because you're running your own business, or getting it from a bank. Uh, management difficulties. Having been a financial controller for over 20 years for small and medium-sized businesses up to about 25 to 50 million, I can tell you that one of the things that has restricted those businesses, or did until other people came in, is that 
the sole proprietor feels that because the business is successful, it's because of him or her. The problem is that when the business gets to seven, eight, ten million, twelve million dollars in revenue, it starts to become a little too big for one person to handle. Certainly one person who doesn't have the background and skills as a manager, because your typical sole proprietor has the skills in the technical side of the business, but not necessarily in business. Uh, overwhelming time commitment. You want to own your own business? Figure on 12 hours a day. It's the way it is. Few fringe benefits. If you want to take a vacation and you own your own store, when you take a vacation, you're either A, going to get somebody to run it for you while you're gone, or B, you're going to close the store. So it's not like getting a paid vacation as an employee. Uh, limited growth. Again, the limited growth has to do with the limited financial resources. And finally, limited lifespan. If nobody in your family wants to take over the business, it's gone when you get out. Being the sole proprietor of a company like a clothing boutique means making a major time commitment to run the business. This is what I was saying. You're working 12 hours a day or more, including constantly seeking out new customers and looking for reliable employees when the time comes to grow. Uh, partnerships. Shared ownership. Two or more owners. Typically, a partnership is managed by what's called a partnership agreement. It's written by a lawyer. It's a legal agreement between the two partners, as, or as many partners as there are, describing who's going to do what. Maybe somebody's going to take care of the business side of the business, the finance, the uh, marketing, bringing in new customers. And the other person is going to do all the nitty-gritty, day-to-day, hands-on work of running the business. There are lots of ways to split up the responsibility, but that's what a partnership agreement does. It defines how the partners want to run the partnership. It includes things like how do we split the profits or how do we split the losses. Uh, a limit general partnership, shared ownership and liability. That's what I was just talking about. Limited partnership. A limited partnership has general partners, which are do what I was just describing, and then limited partners who have limited liability. Maybe they're only investing some money. Master limited partnership acts like a corporation, but it's taxed like a partnership. And finally, there's something that we're all familiar with more recently over the last 15, 20 years, limited liabilities, LLP, which limits the partner's risk. The advantages of partnership, obviously, number one, you have more financial resources. We have more people with more money, so it's easier to expand. There's also shared management and shared liability, pooled complementary skills and knowledge. So everybody shares their knowledge and you get a greater potential. Uh, longer survival. Lim partnership agreements typically include what do we do if one partner wants to leave? The partnership can still go on. And no special taxes. Again, partnerships and sole proprietorships don't have a lot of federal taxation, federal rules. Disadvantages? Again, we have that unlimited liability idea that we had in sole proprietorships. Uh, division of profits. Disagreements among partners. If any of you have uh, siblings, think about when you were growing up. Did everything go nice and smooth and everybody shared? Right? <laughs> Not so. Right? So disagreements among partners, which is why we have a partnership agreement that has to be as specific as possible to cover all the, all the possible disagreements. And sometimes it doesn't. And a difficulty of termination, unless it's defined in the partnership agreement, Termination of a partnership is challenging. Then we have the corporation. Corporations, as if you took any of you took financial accounting, you know that corporations are a separate entity. They are not the owners. They're separate from the owners. So as opposed to a sole proprietorship or a partnership, a corporation has stockholders. So those are the owners but all they do is own a piece of the business. 
It, that therefore limits the liability of the owners to whatever their investment in the stock is. And it enables a lot of people to share in ownership. Advantages, again, we've got the limited liability because the owners, the stockholders, are only liable for what they paid for their stock. That's what they can lose if the corporation fails. Uh, a corporation has an ability to raise a lot more money for investment. They can sell stock. They can sell bonds. So they have much, uh, mu they're much freer in the way they can, they can get capital to improve. The idea of a size of a corporation, just its physical, just its size can help it. Uh, perpetual life, because the corporation is separate from the owners, the corporation goes on forever, as long as it's profitable. Ease of ownership change. The way we change ownership in corporations, you sell your stock or you buy stock. That's the way ownership is changed. Ease of attracting talented employees. We all know that a successful corporation like Apple or Google are going to have a very easy time finding the highest quality, most talented employees. And separation of ownership from management. And that's where the corporate, the corporate uh, pyramid comes into play. Disadvantages? Very, very expensive to start a corporation. You have to apply to the state. You need lots of lawyers. There are lots of legal documents that have to be filed. So that extensive, that paperwork becomes, becomes uh, an issue. There's also something called double taxation. Now, when a corporation does their financial statements, they come out with what's called taxable income, just like an individual. And that income gets taxed. But then when they take that income and they distribute the profits to the shareholders as a dividend, that dividend is also taxable. So that's where you get your double taxation. Two tax returns, tax return for the corporation, tax return for the owners. It's very difficult to terminate a corporation. There are a lot of rules regarding the dissolution of a corporation because there are so many, there are so many interested stakeholders. You've got vendors, you've got lenders, you've got stockholders, you may have bondholders, lots of people who have, uh, who have an interest in the assets of the corporation. Possible conflict with stockholders and board of directors. We see that we see all that in the movie with uh, with Michael Douglas, uh, Wall Street, where he goes to the stockholder, the annual stockholders meeting, and he reams out the board of directors in front of the major stockholders. Here is that triangle I was talking about. At the top, the owners or the stockholders. The stockholders meet once a year and they elect a board of directors. The board of directors is typically successful business people from other industries and from the industry the business is in. And they hire the officers and they set the standards for the way the company is going to be run. Then comes the, or the corporate officers, the C-suite people, CEO, CFO, CIO, uh, the CHO, the human resources person, all those executives who actually do the day-to-day -day running. They report to the board of directors. The board of directors reports to the stockholders. Individuals can incorporate. I worked for many individuals who were corporations, but those are called closely held corporations in the sense that all the stock is owned by, say, a family, like the husband and wife or the husband and wife and kids. They normally don't issue stock to other people. So they don't share the, the advantages and disadvantages of a large corporation. So they, don't, they typically don't do bond issues. They don't sell stock publicly. They do have the limited liability and tax benefits of a corporation. Then there's the S Corp. S Corp has special rules. No more than 100 shareholders. The shareholders that are individuals or estates and who are citizens or permanent residents of the United States. With an S Corp, there's only one class of stock. With a C Corp, you might have dozens of different, different classes of both common and preferred shares. And they cannot derive more than 25% of income from passive sources. 
a passive source of income for a corporation or for an individual for that matter, is a source of income where the owner doesn't do anything for that income. For example, investments in stocks, that's a, that's a uh, passive source. Royalties, interest on investments, those are all passive sources. So LLCs, similar to an S-Corp, but without the eligibility requirements. More than half of new business registrations in some states are LLCs. Now, LLCs, by their very name, tell us that they have limited liability. But the tax, taxably tax, they typically get taxed as a, as a, sole, as a partnership, rather. Um, limited liability, choice of taxation, flexible ownership rules. That's how they differ from an S-Corp. Flexible distribution of profits and operating. Lots of flexibility in an LLC. Disadvantages, there's no stock. There are fewer really incentives for forming an LLC. Taxes are an issue. And of course, there's that, like with any corporation, there's lots of paperwork. Mergers and acquisitions, what's the difference? Well, a merger means two companies form one. They're working together as a team. An acquisition is where one company gobbles up another. Think, uh, what was that video game? Anyway, that's what you should think. Uh, types of mergers. So we're looking here. We see a soft drink company buys a mineral company. That's called a horizontal merger because they're both in the same industry. They're both drinks. A vertical merger is where one company merges with another company that provides the ingredients or the, the, the resources for that product. Soft drink company buys an artificial sweetener company. That's a vertical merger. A conglomerate merger is different items. So we have here a soft drink company and a snack food company. You might think that they're connected in the sense that People who eat chips are going to drink soda, but it's not necessarily the case. So a conglomerate is unrelated industries. Franchises. Franchise agreement is an agreement whereby someone with a good idea, this is where someone with an idea decides rather than investing in expansion on their own, sells the idea to other people and allows them to use the idea to make their own business. For those of you who want to be entrepreneurs, want to own your own business, but you're not quite sure what kind of a business to get into, how to start it, how to run it, franchises are a great, great way to get a foot into the sole proprietorship door. You buy a franchise, the franchise company teaches you everything there is to know, they help you find a location. They help you train your employees. This is all things that I did as a franchise representative for haagen -Dazs. And then you go out on your own. You get your business going. Uh, advantages, like I was saying, management and marketing assistant, personal ownership, it's your business. Nationally recognized name, typically you're going to be contributing to national marketing. There's financial advice and a, a lower failure rate as a startup business because it's already been successful. Disadvantages, large startup costs. McDonald's used to look for a million dollars in liquid assets in order to buy a franchise. Why? Because they knew that the first couple of years of a new business, you're not going to be making a whole lot of money, if any. So you need to have capital to keep the business going during those first couple of years until you really get your foot going and you start making money. Uh, shared profit. Typically a franchise company is going to want a piece of the action. Uh, with, uh, with McDonald's again, you not only they get a piece of the action, you have to buy all of your supplies, paper goods, food, everything from McDonald's. Uh, management regulation, that was something that I did as a franchise rep. I would go out and look at existing franchises and make sure they were following the franchise rules. Uh, coattail effects. If the corporation has a problem, it's going to roll down the hill to the franchisees. Restrictions on selling and fraudulent franchisors. 
And that takes care of our discussion of the three basic forms of business. Again, please feel free to contact me. You can text me, you can call me, you can send me an email. Uh, I set up office hours via Zoom. So have a great week and I will see you next time.